minifigure has been around for quite some time, and with all of that passage of time, there have been a few different variations out there for all of us to experience. Some good, and some not so good. On this scale from horrifying to habitually used, mini dolls fall somewhere on this scale, and that's what I'm going to tell you today. Uh, spoilers ahead, I don't think it leans up towards the good end. With all the previous incarnations of different types of figures coming out from now all the way back then, none have really surpassed Homo Figus or the humble minifigure that we know today. And there's a good reason. When you're going to pass out an icon, something everybody can see from any point in the world and say, yep, that's a that's a, one of those thingies, you got to come out pretty hard hitting with something that's way better. And the mini doll just wasn't hitting hard enough. My hit piece of a video today isn't solely emotionally based. There are a few hard hitting numbers that back it. For one, the mini doll only consists of three parts, legs, torso, and head, while the mini figure consists of nine, two legs, hip, torso, two arms, two hands, and head. The lacking of parts doesn't only affect sheer body count, but also posability, with the minifigure having seven different points of articulation. The mini dolls fall even harder on their face when it comes to this. All they can move is their head, arms, and then their waist area where they can just bend over, and while some people like that, I'm a man of refined class that wants a little bit more for my mini doll. Moving further beyond parts and posability, we get to a scaling system. And when people talk about minifig scale, they're assuming that the average minifigure is six feet tall. With a minifigure being four bricks tall or six feet in our equivalent world, that means that each Lego brick is a foot and a half tall. If we convert that to a mini doll, then they're not bricks tall or even plates tall, but rather they're four brick and one half plates tall. Not super system friendly, but that does make in our real world equivalent, mini dolls, six foot and seven inches tall. That's terrifying. For some reference for how tall six foot seven actually is, I am 5'11". My older brother, uh, circumstantially, is 5'7". This is the comparison. He is significantly taller than me, just so, just so you have an idea of how tall these Amazonians are. And with their additional height above the average minifigure, already being six foot, mind you, they throw the Lego world way out of scale. While the mini dolls can fit through a door, they don't fit into things like car seats, where you can see that Lego had to add extra extensions to take into account their ridiculously long legs. Oh, with all these out of shape proportions, instead of having the almost somewhat reasonable realistic form of a minifigure, we have this Barbie doll effect where mini dolls aren't only uh, standards that we just can't simply achieve, but they're ridiculously curvy. They... They're... Also, with them being that tall, they have a statistically shorter lifespan than the average minifigure because tall people die at an earlier age. Isn't that sad? I have a few stats here that I'd like to run through that j just to give you an idea of why the mini doll is as crappy as I perceive it to be. Uh, the first one being battle droids, Lego battle droids. The things that people have been complaining about for a long time for not updating and getting bendable legs and all of that for various reasons. Uh, battle droids have more parts to build them than a mini doll. The Jack Stone style minifigure, uh, the technically one part, you can't take them apart and put them back together unless you have a pair of pliers or something, in which case you're destroying the minifigure. That has more points of articulation than a mini doll. Micro dolls, the kid version of mini dolls and the equivalent of short leg minifigures, have only two parts and one point of articulation, while a mini mini minifigure has seven parts and five points of articulation. Lastly, with our fun facts, Duplo figures, the, yes, Duplo figures, the same ones meant for infants and toddlers, have the exact same amount of uh, points of articulation as the mini doll. What kind of ideas you can draw from that in terms of girls being lesser than boys in the eyes of Lego? I don't know, that might be a bit of a stretch, but it is- Girls just can't handle all these articulations. Mini dolls being at a half plate height difference than mini figures isn't the only weird thing that isn't super system based. The other one would be their necks. Instead of having the stud diameter shaped neck that minifigures have, they have a rod shaped neck. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind a girl with a thin neck, but sometimes I like them a little bit swole. But more important than roided up necks, I like parts that actually fit. Because the mini doll's neck size is smaller than the minifigure's neck size, capes and other accessories that are made for mini dolls don't fit on mini figures. I learned this the hard way when I bought a friend set specifically for the capes in them. Andrea's accessory store. I bought it for the cape and the furry ears. Help me, please. Only to realize when I was parting out the set, it couldn't fit on my minifigures. And this issue hasn't been any more apparent than the newest release of Disney princess sets with Ariel's castle. In this set, Ariel's father, the Mermaid King, doesn't have a printed head because it can't fit a normal beard 
on its neck bracket. And instead, they had to make a specially molded helmet configuration that fits over its normal mini doll head. That borderline doesn't fit the LEGO system, but what doesn't fit the LEGO system even more is another comparison to Jackstone that can be made. Uh, the fact that the mini doll's head is molded in a sense where it has nose and concave areas for the eyes. While that seemingly doesn't have an issue, it does until you realize mini dolls can't have dual sided face prints and you can only have one face on one head and if you turn it around... Hmm. Don't worry, they rectified that problem by adding an additional head in some of the newer sets that just came out. Ten years after the introduction of mini dolls, they finally fixed the problem of the heads being only one-sided. Ten years! How do you guys store mini doll heads? Like this or like this? Because I personally store them like this. I think your cups have overfloweth with, with all of this direct, very concrete evidence that I have passed on before you. Now I would like to take a second to share my opinions on why I'm not a big fan of mini dolls. My biggest gripe with mini dolls is the consistency outside of the neck department. We've already talked about that and beat the dead horse more than enough. Consistency in the fact that I can't really have mini dolls and minifigures cohabitating in a world together. I am a little bit anal with it. I don't like skin tone figures being with yellow figures in a Lego city, for example. There can be reasons for it, like maybe the yellow tone figures are aliens and they are in a sci-fi world together. But that is the only case I can think of mini dolls also working with it. Kind of like what they did in Lego Movie 2. Although that feels kind of limiting in scenarios that play out. The other issue is customization. While mini figures have nine base parts, plus all the other additional accoutrements you can put on it, that leaves a lot of room to swap out and make whatever you want. Mini dolls, not as much. If you want short sleeves or long sleeves, then you have to have a whole torso that goes along with it. If you want cargo shorts or a dress, again, whole sets of legs that go with it. That leaves even more in terms of LEGO creativity and openness to be desired. Other than all of the reasons in front of me, they're perfectly great toys that everybody should love and there's no reason to hate them. 